one of the resources that we offer in help um, through our assessments is advanced care planning and doing personal directives, right? So it's for anyone really. So anyone thinking about their wishes, medically or, or otherwise, personal preferences, if they're not able to speak for themselves, right? So with our help, they can create a personal directive document, which becomes a legal document that states what someone's wishes are medically or for their personal care if they're not able to say what they want. I think it can help their outcome in a lot of ways. I think overall, a lot of people aren't aware that it is an option to think about their wishes if they couldn't say what they wanted. Um, with our patients that have COPD, they end up in hospitals sometimes with exacerbations and then more shortness of breath. So they are accessing maybe the health system um, more than some other populations and are asked these questions of, you know, if, if bad things happen to you um, and you're unable to speak for yourself, what do you want us to do with you medically, right? If, if your heart stops working or your lungs stop working, do you want us to restart them? Do you want us to, to do resuscitation on you? Um, and our program gives them an opportunity to reflect on these wishes when they're not in that medical crisis, right? If they are ready to talk about these things, right? We are inviting them if that's something they want to do. Um, they could end up, you know, um, I want to say it, it can be sort of a, a gift to your family and, and alleviate some burdens of if you were in a medical situation, a certain circumstance, uh, medical professionals would want to ask your family, what do you want us to, to do with this person as far as treatment goes? And you might be able to have those conversations now as a guide for your loved ones if you're not able to say what you want, right? It can, yeah, it can. I mean, we're an individualized program, so a lot of my visits are seeing where the person is with how they're coping with their illness and how much they understand about their disease process and how severe it is for them at the time. So we are able to name these things and say, what is it that you know about your COPD, right? And, and people are on various um, knowledge bases of how bad their disease is or where it is. And we cre create through a relationship building that open forum if they want to discuss what that's like for them. So people could be holding things inside and worried and afraid of what might happen, but we allow them the space to voice that, right? And ask us questions about it or, or just kind of talk about what it's like for them. And then I think overall they can receive comfort because a lot of the feedback that I get is, you know, well, I never thought of that or I never, I never saw my disease in this light before. Or again, it, I wasn't aware that I could make a personal directive and have my wishes written down. And then I guess the comfort from that would be, it's the best thing we know in the health system to, to try to make sure your wishes are followed if you're not able to say what you want. And I think that is because Number one, the, the awareness and education isn't necessarily there. So that they're saying, oh, no, I didn't know that this was an option that I could make a personal directive, right? And then you have me or someone like me sitting there um, and helping them go through that process. Because um, it can be kind of a scary thing to think about what's gonna happen down the road. When you introduce that, you, you run the risk of people thinking, well, am I dying now, right? And the f fact is, is that it's good for any adult to think about these things because none of us know what's gonna happen tomorrow with our health. Um, so when you demystify the process and you, you get in there as part of a relationship, um, yeah, most people are open to the conversation. Not always, and it is up to the patient. If they're not ready to talk about this, we are always assessing the readiness to discuss these things. Um, but as I said, that's another, that's just one of the resources we offer. We're, we're there to help you how you're coping. You know, if, if there's other resources they're interested in, if they're worried about their finances or medications, things like that, we're going to help with that. And then that's, a, that's an aside. So if someone wasn't ready to engage in advanced care planning, we're still going to follow them and help them as best we can.